for more, I'm joined in the studio by Dr. Jule Specht. She's a professor of psychology at the Free University in Berlin. Dr. Specht, welcome to Tomorrow Today. Hello. Why are twin studies so valuable to personality research? Well, twin studies can inform us about um, how differences between person, uh, between individuals can be explained. And twin studies found that about half of the differences between individuals are due to genetic differences and that uh, about the same amount of differences are due to environmental influences. That means what people experience in their life. Let's talk about those genetic differences for a minute. Now, researchers in Vaughan recently said that they found a gene or a gene variant that was linked to absent-mindedness. How strong is the evidence that certain genes are linked to certain personality traits? Well, we're just at the beginning in finding uh, genes that translate into personality characteristic, but it seems to be the case that it's uh, really the case that we have uh, single specific genes that cause a specific personality trait, but it's rather an interplay of um, different um, genes that uh, enhance the probability that a specific personality trait will occur in a person. So it's rarely the case that we have one gene and this gene causes one personality trait. Your own research focuses on personality development. What's the most surprising thing you found? Well, in this study where we um, use data of about 15,000 individuals um, from all of adulthood, we found that people in young adulthood are pretty, do uh, change pretty much in their personality. And this is also true for people in old age again. And this is something that was really surprising for us because it is um, common knowledge about um, personality development list that there is lots of changes in young age, but that there are uh, comparable, comparatively strong changes in old age again was something pretty new and we were very surprised to see. That is surprising. What are the ways that people change in old age? Well, we see that um, individuals tend on average to get more conscientious uh, as they age. They um, get more agreeable with age, especially in old age, and they are uh, less open to experiences when getting older. Hmm. Now let's say I'm an introvert and I want to become a bit more extroverted. How would I go about that? Is that even possible? Well, it seems to be the case that it's possible. So it's uh, possible to change personality, but not um, in one huge step. But we need to change personality in, uh, in small steps. So this means it is possible to change the personality, but it takes time and patience. Um, so if a person would like to be an extrovert, this person could aim at changing the personality in specific situations. And then this would get automatic uh, in the behavior of this person. And this could uh, really change personality as a whole. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, I was doing some research before the show and I found your blog, Eula mm -hmm. Schreibt, which is fantastic. And you've got a little section where you talk about the impact of scientific research on relationships. And what's the most important thing that personality psychology tells us about our love life? Oh, well, there are lots of findings that, uh, in, from uh, scientific research that can inform our daily life. But one of the findings, for example, is that um, that if we're looking for a partner, it seems that we don't have an idea about what kind of partner would fit to us. So um, if we do, for example, online dating and we have the idea that there is an agency or we ourselves can identify the person that fits to our own personality, um, this is um, kind of an, um, yeah, the findings show that it's not that easy to find a partner, but that it's a lot of uh, chance uh, having its hand in this uh, how how we uh, get in love with a person we don't know yet. All right. That's some interesting news for online daters there. Dr. Speck, thank you so much for joining us here on mm -hmm. Tomorrow Today. Thank you.